Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Yulia Deset, and I'm a PhD student at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. And today I will be speaking uh, about the insights that the Freya High on the Mid-Norwegian Rifted Margin may provide into the 3D evolution of necking domains. And I'm being supervised by Per Tadeus Munson and Gwen Peron Pinvidic. And I would like to note just before I start that all the seismic data that will be displayed throughout this presentation as uh, the courtesy of the public MPD uh, DISCOS database um, here in Norway. So uh, jumping right into the mid-Norwegian margin, as you can see from the top map here, uh, we're located on the eastern conjugate of the North Atlantic Rift, um, where we have the mid-Norwegian rifted margin just offshore Trondheim uh, and the Norwegian mainland here. Um, so this uh, map on our le left side here shows the different uh, structural um, features on the mid-Norwegian rifted margin. Also, the mid one is my, size, uh, my seismic data set and also the wells that are incorporated in this study. And uh, on our left, on our right here, we have the, the kind of the segmentation of the mid Norwegian rifted margins into the different specific domains that we have uh, across the margin. In my study area, the Freya High and the Krokfall complex is located uh, in the southern part of the margin where we see. Uh, from this figure, how the Freya High um, is from the proximal domain going straight into the distal domain, and the KFC, the Krokfall complex, actually constitutes a combined inner and outer necking breakaway complex. Um, now, just to introduce uh, the um, concepts of, uh, um, of rifted margin, different these different domains and these different breakaway complexes. We see that the, the different domains have their own structural configuration that can is traced laterally, and also that these different domains can be subdivided um, and are constrained by these different breakaway complexes, which has their own structural uh, or uh, their own significant geomorphology. And the KFC, as you can see, are the Krokfall complex uh, in the necking domain is this breakaway complex where we thin our crust from about 30 kilometers of thickness down to 10 and below. Um, just uh, into the Ruas Basin in this area. So going into the study area, um, what you're seeing on the uh, right side here is the top metamorphic or top acoustic basement um, as mapped uh, using seismic reflection data across the margin. And you see how the Freya high in the foot wall is bordered from the Ruas Basin and its hanging wall by this kind of sinusoidal KFC, this clock fall complex. And also, uh, these uh, red lines correspond to the seismic sections on our left side here. And you can see that um, with very um, a long strike of this system, there's a significant uh, variation in the geometries of these systems along strike. And also, uh, along strike, the Krak fall complex uh, records uh, between 25 and 35 kilometers of displacement, which is quite severe, uh, and that we see both in map view here and also on the seismic uh, transects that the both the fault scarp and the foot wall itself is severely eroded. And also I want just before I go more into the models for the area, I want to draw your attention to the central part of the high here where we see um, a radial and sizing patterns of these valleys coming down from the high uh, into the basin. And that in seismic transects, we can see that the foot wall is kind of back rotated and has this convex upwards shape uh, that is not only traceable in uh, the top basement itself, but we can also see this trend in the uh, intra-basement seismic facies when looking into 3D seismic data with the high resolution. So keeping all of these um, kind of factors in mind, um, when looking at the Freya High in three dimensions, uh, we can recognize how the uh, Freya High is kind of wrapped, um, and the crack fall complex is uh, flanking this super detachment basin in its hanging wall uh, from the Freya High and its foot wall, and you can see the severe de uh, degradation of the foot wall here. So our interpretation of this area is that we're actually looking at the remnants of what is known as a turtle back structure, so that this uh, kind of drawing here uh, might be an indication of what the Paleo Freya High looked like at some point prior to erosion, if you will. And why have we called it a turtle back? That is because we believe there's an analog relationship between the foot wall geometry uh, for the Freya High uh, and the Krokfall complex 
to what we see in the basin range in the western US. So this is the Copper Canyon turtleback. Um, and you can see that this also has this turtleback-shaped metamorphic core complex in its, in its foot wall, and also has this as these structural recesses kind of flanking it. This thick stipal line here uh, is where the detachment kind of wraps around this turtleback. We also have some uh, reactivation and partly exploiting, partly incising uh, the turtleback structure in the uh, that we can see in the copper around the Copper Canyon. And we also see that in the northern structural recess on the Freya High. Um, and they both have this radial uh, pattern of incising valleys coming down from the turtle back that you can see here. And you also see the same kind of valleys coming down from the turtle back. But to test this analog further, we need to look at more specifically at the differences between these two uh, turtle back structures um, and not just looking at the similarities. And the two main uh, differences is that the Copper Canyon turtleback uh, is a result of Miocene Pleistocene rifting, but it was also exhumed, the foot wall was exhumed during uh, a transtensional strain regime, meaning that we, at the same time as we had rifting, we also had uh, orthogonal shortening and we had folding of our detachment fault plane and our foot wall. Uh, whilst for the Freya High and the crop fall complex, this is a result of mid-Jurassic to early Cretaceous rifting, and there's no signs uh, or no indications uh, of a transtensional strain regime uh, being present while we had the football exhumation in this system. And also, uh, the reason why I had to draw this turtle back on this, um, on the Freya High here is obviously because it's been later been peneplained, uh, which is not something that we see on the Copper Canyon turtle back, which has this convex upwards uh, shape preserved. So looking into uh, how, how can this be explained, um, we need to also revisit the, the existing models for rift and for fault evolution. And a lot of you will probably be familiar with these uh, figures that are based on Gothard and Leader's uh, publication from the year 2000, where when we have, we have, we start off with the rift initiation stage uh, as displayed in the schematic figure here, uh, before we, as displacement continues, we get to the interaction and linkage stage, we see faults B and C are, are now linked and this relay is now um, been replaced by this synclinal depression in the football where the relay formerly resided. Before we uh, continue uh, to rift and displace along the system, we get to the through going fault system stage where now this fault segments A, B and C are now uh, linked up to form this one uh, fault segment. And now if we imagine uh, a peneplanation event uh, or a base level drop within the system, say that this is the, as far as our displacement goes um, for this system, and we introduce uh, erosion, the events of erosion will primarily affect the former highest topographic levels in the foot wall, meaning that this, that will correspond to where a fault segment B resided here, because that is where we have the highest displacement and the longest segment length, so that the end result might look something like this. And the reason why this model is problematic is that it's, uh, for when speaking of necking domains and necking breakaway complexes is that it uh, does not take into account the severe amounts of displacement that we typically see along these necking breakaway complexes. Because uh, the associated detachment fault systems within these fault complexes typically record displacement in the order of tens to hundreds of kilometers, meaning that we're thinning the crust drastically and we're starting to um, also, um, um, need to, we need to ask the question, um, what ha happens if displacement continues beyond stage three here? What happens if we continue uh, to displace along this system? And to look into that, there has been some numerical modeling that has been done, uh, specifically looking at Luc Laviersburg from the late 90s, where he, uh, based on numerical modeling, introduced up to 27 kilometers of displacement along one single fault segment or detachment fault, if you will. Uh, and what we saw was that we started with a typical half graben system at the beginning, but as rifting uh, progressed or displacement increased, we saw that the fault wall uh, started to back rotate and kind of attain lower angles before we, at circa 27 kilometers of displacement, had a full back rotation um, of our detachment fault plane and sub, sub horizontal um, detachment uh, in the football exposed here. 
So going, this is a, as this is in two dimensions, what would, trying to figure out how would, what would this look like if we were to look at this in three dimensions? And as we know that um, uh, fault segments will have fault tips and they will also have an area of maximum displacement, we can try to stack these um, along strike of each other or laterally, if you will. And we might get a, a configuration like this. You're at the 10 minute mark now. Okay, thank you. Meaning that as we move towards the area of maximum displacement, we might encounter this rolling hinge model uh, at the area of maximum displacement. So, uh, meaning that going from 2D to 3D, detachment fault systems will record varying geometries due to varying displacement along strike. Now, trying to introduce these concepts into the schematic model for um, rifting, we can uh, go back and try to um, iterate our model, if you will. So we have our initiation stage, but what if we say that in the interaction and linkage stage that we concentrate our displacement along segments A, B, and C, and that this is also the case for the through going fault system. Now, up until this point, our, uh, our models uh, look the same, but if we now introduce the upwarping of the detachment fault plane, if we keep displacing along fault segment one here, we might expect uh, a configuration looking like this, where the area of highest displacement is upward, both in the hanging and foot wall, and we have this flank and it's flanked by these synclinal epicenters. And if we go to uh, what in Babiesh model was 27 kilometers of displacement, we might expect a turtle backstage if we keep on displacing along this fault segment. And now introducing our drop in base level, for instance, um, the events of erosion will again affect the highest topographic levels in the football, and we might expect to have this um, radial incise and pattern around the former turtle back structure. And then, so taking this model and comparing it to what we actually see on the Freya High, um, and looking at which type of uh, the end members of these different models uh, are we looking at, there's a striking resemblance between uh, this. Uh, and member here, taking into account the rolling hinge model and the um, isostatic effects in the area of maximum displacement when comparing it to the current configuration of the top basement of the Freya High, which also shows this radial pattern of incising valleys coming down from the high into the super detachment basin, flanking the high in front of it. Um, so with introducing uh, localized isostatic uplift as a response to the, in the area of maximum displacement, we might be able to uh, explain how we can get a turtle back structure in the necking domain of the mid Norwegian rift margin without the presence of a transtensional strain regime and a folding or a foot wall. Um, and the peniponation of these incised turtle back can be constrained based on well data to known transgressive uh, and regressive events and unconformities that are regional across the mid Norwegian margin. Um, so, uh, just I'll finish off quickly with the implications. So we, uh, from the Freya High, we see a strong lateral contrast, uh, a long strike, um, within the necking domain of the mid Norwegian margin. And we also, when studying the Kruk fault complex, uh, we can point to how detachment fault systems may provide, uh, geomorphologies that differ strongly from those, uh, that we typically see in traditional normal fault systems. And also that if we introduce localized isostatic uplift due to large amounts of displacement, we can uh, ultimately produce turtle back structures or at least these sinusoidal detachment fault shapes. Um, and as these systems will um, change their geometry as they evolve, depending on the amount of displacement, this will also uh, control the amounts of footwall erosion and therefore also sediment routing and rerouting um, and also affect the hanging ball uh, based in architecture. So I think I will just stop there, uh, being conscious of time to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Julie. That was fantastic. Those are amazing, amazing images and amazing thoughts. Um, I have a question, but I will let the audience first. There's a question from Mark Rowan. Anybody else who's got a question, please put it in the um, in the chat or put your hand up. So Mark? Yeah, um, I have a very simple question. Can you please compare for us the scales between the Copper Canyon example and your Norwegian margin example? It wasn't clear to me. Uh, yeah, I thank you for asking that question. Actually, I wanted to include it in the uh, in the presentation, but I can go uh, back to the. 
sorry. Okay, so um, uh, at its at its broadest uh, parallel or at its broadest uh, perpendicular to the direction of extension or believed extension on the Theodore trail back, it's approximately 45 uh, kilometers wide. Uh, wide, but the Copper Canyon turtle back is about 3.7 kilometers. So it's a it's a completely different scale. But it's um and that is also the argument uh, that is that we're using that we're saying that a deeper levels of the crust are actually uh, part of this exhumation uh, in the Nethin domain, uh, and that we can use this to to create the turtle back structure. Whilst uh, when the turtle backs are smaller in size. As the Copper Canyon, for instance, this would point more towards uh, folding, uh, indicating a transtensional strain regime, which is quite similar to what we see uh, on the mid, uh, on the mainland in Norway and the Devonian system there. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. Thank you. And I believe Derek Kier's also got a question. Yeah, just a quick question. Do you see a, a shift towards seeing the, um, I don't know, the eroded metamorphic core complex in the stratigraphy of the of the hanging wall? You kind of alluded to something like that at the end of the talk, but it wasn't clear. Like, do you see that in the sediment fill? Um, what do you mean? The like, as, I suppose, yeah, as the the metamorphic core, core, core complex is exposed, do you then see a record of that being eroded in the stratigraphy of the hanging wall in the basin right next to the turtleback? Yes, and what we also see, which I could not include, um, was, I'm not sure if I can go out of this. Uh, oh, um, if I do. You can share an image or something off your screen if you want. I, I was uh, prepared for your question. <laughs> um, so what we're seeing is that when we introduce multiple changes in uh, base level, uh, as is introduced in this these figures here, and we also keep back rotating as we introduce new base levels, what we will see are these nick points in the model. And these are uh, traceable across the Freya High. Um, and what we're seeing is that these different channel systems, they also correspond to uh, unconformities that we see in the um, syn tectonic strata in the Ross Basin. So that is ongoing work now trying to see, because uh, they're all pre-Cretaceous packages, but we're trying to date them based on uh, the erosional events and the width of the channels and um, how these um, uh, these correspond to other unconformities that will yeah but it's it's a it's a difficult thing because it's only geometries and magnitude that we can look at when it comes to the sediments because there are no wells that drill as deep uh, as in little space and so we don't have core data or biostrats so it's a relative uh, correlation if you will thanks brilliant Okay, there are a number of questions are starting to pile up in the chat. Um, perhaps one more, and then I'll ask you, Julie, to, to follow up to um, the other speakers. So there's a question from Adele Mustafa. Uh, Adele, did you want to unmute and ask a question or shall I read it? Yes, please. Uh, I'm asking about uh, which area experienced more erosion in the foothold? Is it the area of the turtle backs or the areas between them? This is, I think, what I see in your uh, uh, 3D diagram. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, th so the idea is that this radial, uh, these valleys are being kind of cannibalized and reused uh, as we have, um, as the evolution of the system kind of progresses. Uh, so that the, the radial pattern was established when the turtleback was established. And this is also the area that experiences the most uplift uh, and thus erosion throughout time. But it's um, what we see in the 3D seismic data is that the, the channels and the erosion from the turtle back down to the basin are the, the deepest and the most profound, and they kind of thin out as we go a long strike from uh, away from what we believe to be the highest point in the footwall um, after uh, or during turtle back exhumation, if you will. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Was it okay? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> 